Hey everyone, this is Friedel Hacker, AJ Raven. I'm here with my recap and review of the Bruto anime series, episode number 187, which is titled Karma. And this was a fun episode. I liked the action sequences. I liked some of the information that the anime writers shared about the Kara mark that Bruto has and what it's capable of doing and the price that Bruto has to uh, pay when he uses it. So the episode opens with everyone being happy that they were able to defeat Ao. And Konamaru is actually impressed by his team. He's like, you know what? You three are amazing. You fought Ao, who was a very high-ranking ninja. And uh, Katasuke is like, you know what? After seeing all uh, all four of you in action, and especially the three, the three young ninjas, he's very he's he's hopeful about uh, the future of uh, of uh, Shinobi. Now, uh, before uh, Team Seven can properly uh, be happy about their accomplishment. Kashin Koji appears and yeah it Kashin Koji appearing in this episode was uh, it was it was uh, known that he was going to appear and he did and he ended up uh, summoning his team toad and i really liked how how the how the camera uh, visualized the scene with Kashin Koji on the tower and also above his team toad while Bruto is down there and yeah because of the weight of his uh, summoning the, tro uh, the tower breaks and Kashin Koji is basically his mission is to kill Ao and he also wants to take Bruto out too but uh, Ao before he before he be before he's crushed to death he ends up using a jitsu, uh, a water release jitsu, and the pressure of the water takes uh, Buruto away from uh, the crash site. And yeah, Ao is dead, and Kashin Koji is like, you know what, Ao? Uh, even before you died, being a shinobi, you ended up using a water release uh, jitsu. So I guess you wanted to die as a shinobi because you were a shinobi. And again, I do know that in the in the previous episode, the writers tried to justify Ao being an enemy, but they tried, they tried. It still didn't make sense. Basically, Ao was like, you know what? No one is ever going to be as powerful as your father, uh, Baruto. Uh, you know, Naruto Ozumaki. So why even bother? But being uh, but being a cyborg and having these uh, scientific ninja tools being uh, being attached to my body that gave me power. And that's the future of the shinobi because I died, but it still made no sense to me that why would Ao... Okay, Ao becoming a cyborg and using scientific ninja tools to gain power made sense. However, Ao, Ao then, be, uh, then defecting to the Kara organization and working for them made no sense to me. But it is what it is. So yeah, Ao is dead. And now we have Team 7 uh, fighting uh, Kashin Koji. And yeah, Kashin Koji is a very formidable opponent. And he ends up, he, uh, Kashin Koji is like, you know what? You all know a lot uh, about what's happening and I can't let you live. So I'm going to kill you. And uh, even Kohanamaru is like, you know what? Uh, I need you to tell me about the car organization. And Kashin Koji is like, yeah, why? Why would I tell you more about the car organization? So Kashin Koji ends up using the... Uh, this uh, ceiling jitsu uh, which uh, yeah which is a strong ceiling jitsu mitsuki can't move uh, buruto salad no one can move and it's basically a paralysis jitsu and kashin koji is getting ready to kill them however kohanamaru being the jonin that he is he actually has this uh, jitsu release a ceiling jitsu release patron on his chest and he and he uses that so while the rest of the team seven is still under paralysis jitsu kohanamaru is able to free himself and kohanamaru is like you know you know what this is my chance to shine i am going to put my life on the line to save my students and then we have a fight between konamaru and kashin koji and yeah it's clear that kashin koji is leagues above ao and even though konamaru is a formidable jonin he is a capable jonin kashin koji is basically in my opinion he's a kage level threat and there's no way that konamaru is able to defeat someone who is a kage level threat who is stronger uh, and also who is quite uh, strategic. Yeah, Kashin Koji uses his brain while fighting. He's always thinking of strategies. And the fight between Kashin Koji and Kohanamaru made that clear. So yeah, Kohanamaru is having trouble landing a single hit on uh, Kashin Koji. And Kohanamaru, of course, goes in with his Rasengan. And to Kohanamaru's and everyone's surprise, Kashin Koji also uses a Rasengan. And both Rasengans... Uh, they are they are trying to cancel each other out there's an explosion and both kashin koji and kohanamaru are pushed back 
However, again, because Kashin Koji is smart, he uh, it's revealed that he ended up placing a little a little toad on Konamaru, and the toad is like, "Hey, girl." And the toad ends up bursting into flames. And this is basically, if I remember right, this is the trance of true flames, uh, which is an attack of uh, Kashin Koji and. According to Kashin Koji, no amount of water or wind can extinguish these flames. So I guess it's kind of like a Amaterasu. Who knows? But yeah, Konamaru is burning. He doesn't know how to counter this attack. And seeing their sensei being burned alive is way too much for Team 7. And Bruto is getting emotional. And all of those emotions end up helping him uh, activate uh, the karma mark on his hand. And because of the activated karma mark, uh, Bruto is able to absorb the paralysis jutsu and he's also able to absorb the trance of true flames attack that's uh, covering Kohnamaru. And Kohnamaru is uh, hurt. And uh, because this is the first time that Buruto uses the karma, the karma mark, he his body can't necessarily handle it, and he faints. So Mitsuki and uh, Mitsuki goes to Konamaru, and Salad goes in to protect uh, Buruto. But Kashin Koji comes uh, comes in, and uh, Kashin Koji is of course surprised to learn that uh, Buruto has the karma mark, and he states that okay, so uh, so okay, so Momoshiki is the one who selected uh, Buruto. And Salad is ready to fight uh, Kashin Koji with a kunai. And I'm like, Salad, you have super strength. You need to use your fists. What's a kunai supposed to do to Kashin Koji? <laughs> but yeah, Kashin Koji is like, you know what? Uh, I'll I'll leave you all be. I won't kill you. And consider this a, uh, consider this, uh, this a gift or a mercy because you showed me something interesting. So he decides to walk, uh, walk away and uh, Salad being emotional. She goes after Kashin Koji and uh, however Mitsuki comes in and he stops Salad because Mitsuki is like, do you really want to risk uh, getting Bruto and Kohnamaru killed because you want to go after Kashin Koji? You need to be wise right now. And yeah, Salad calms down and Kashin Koji is like, yep, I expected no less from the son of Orochimaru. Yeah, you, you, so you can tell that Kashin Koji knows a lot about these kids and Kashin Koji walks away. And then we cut to uh, Salad helping Buruto walk. And Buruto is like, Salad, I'm all right. But Salad is like, are you sure? Uh, you, didn't feel, uh, you didn't look so good uh, back there. But yeah, Buruto is recovering. Mitsuki is there as well to offer support. And they all walk towards Katasuke and uh, Kohnamaru. And it turns out that Kohnamaru ended up uh, burying Ao. And Kohnamaru is like, even though I don't, I, don't, I, I don't forgive Ao for what he did to Majino, Ao was still a shinobi, so might as well give him a problem. Operation OB burial. And yeah, again, even though Ao saved Buruto, I was, after reading the manga, I was hoping that the writers would make more sense of Ao again defecting and working for the car organization. But in my opinion, uh, the, the explanation uh, needed more work. We cut to Amado looking at data concerning code and in the manga Amado smokes a lot but I guess the anime couldn't show that. So Amado is basically addicted to coffee now and he goes to refill his mug and while he's gone we see Delta coming in and Delta is reading up on what uh, Amado has been reading on and yeah we know that uh, that the car that certain members in the car organization are trying to figure out who the mole is and Delta is like you know what it's not code it's it's not me it's not basically Boro so it's ba so it's probably Kashin Koji I guess and uh, Delta uh, Delta notices uh, Amado coming back, so she runs away. However, Amado does uh, does notice that someone was looking at his computer. So we we see Team Seven heading back uh, heading back to the village. And Buto's like, "Why do we need to go to the village? We still haven't figured out what was in the container and why the why the Kara members were after it." And Konamaru is like, "You know what? This mission has we uh, this mission has become way too dangerous." We need to head back to the village because I have a lot to report. And Bruto's like, you know what, uh, Konamaru, you're right. So let's head back. But however, as they're as they're making their way back to the village, this is where Mitsuki notices something. And of course, Bruto follows Mitsuki, and it and it turns out that Mitsuki was able to sense that a fight occurred nearby, and the team uh, notices the same puppets that attacked them. Well, not the same puppets, but the same uh, puppets as in they look similar and they were basically, I guess these were the 
puppets that went after what was uh, contained in the blimp while the remaining puppets were the one that team 7 and Kohnamaru fought and they're actually impressed uh, seeing all of these puppets being damaged and they're like whoever did that that person or thing had uh, had high level fighting powers because when we were fighting these puppets we couldn't uh, destroy them in such a manner and then Jamaru uh, appears and Jamaru and of course team 7 is happy to see Jamaru and they follow Jamaru and Jamaru leads them to Tan tanak. The thing that was in the container, so it's it's quirky, and of course, uh, manga readers know where this is going. However, I won't be spoiling anything for the anime uh, only watchers. And yeah, Bruto goes in, and even uh, and because. Konamaru is like, Bruto, I don't want you to go in. It might be a trap. We don't necessarily know who that boy is. But, but, but Bruto is like, no, that boy is injured. We need to help him. And he goes in and he notices that Kowaki also has uh, the same karma mark that Bruto has. And of course, Bruto is very intrigued by Kowaki. He's like, who the heck are you? And this is where the episode ends. I will be doing a written review of this for the Geeky Eri. The link to that will be down in the comment section below. Again, I enjoyed this episode. I like the fighting sequences. I like the extra scenes and dialogue that the, that the anime writers added. And now that Kawaki has been introduced in the anime, again, I'm looking forward to seeing how the writers are going to handle Kawaki being part of uh, the anime, especially uh, when uh, the writers end up uh, giving us uh, anime episodes that don't necessarily... Uh, adapt uh, directly adapt the content from the manga you, uh, i mean i won't call them filler episodes but fillerish episodes so i'm really interested in seeing how those fillerish episodes are going to handle kwaki but yeah let me know what you thought down in the comment section below and until next time stay happy stay safe stay blessed see you guys later